Today we're talking about optical snoots. What are they and how do you use them? It's all on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. You've probably got photo questions. What are you waiting for? Go to askdavidbergman.com, fill out the form there, and I just might answer your question right here on a future show. Let's get right to it. Today's question was sent in from Pete S. And Pete wants to know, what is an optical snoot and what kinds of things can you do with it? Well, a snoot, besides being a funny sounding word, it's also a light modifier that you can put on flashes or on constant lights. Now, a regular non-optical snoot is basically just a tube that your light goes through. Of course, you can buy snoots with the right mount for your flash system like Bowens or Profoto or a bunch of others. But there are also things out there like the MagMod Mag Snoot, for example, that works on speed light sized flashes using their own magnet system. You can even make your own snoot with cardboard or paper or even something like cinefoil. If you don't know what cinefoil is, it's this kind of stuff. It's kind of like very thick aluminum foil, it comes in a roll and uh, it's very heavy and you can mold it and shape it. It's black. So you can really have uh, use this to shape the light in many different ways. It's all kinds of good uses for that stuff. But you can use that to make your own, to shape your own snoot if you want to. So what does a snoot do? Well, it simply narrows the beam of light, giving you a lot of control over where your light goes and where it doesn't. Most snoots are round. In most cases, it's gonna be a round shape. So it's gonna give you almost like a spotlight effect. The longer the snoot, the more narrow the beam of light. So here's what the flash coverage looks like, for example, without any modification at all, just straight flash. And here it is with a six inch snoot I made out of cinefoil. And then here it is with a 12 inch long snoot. So you can see the difference. The longer snoot gives a narrower beam. So that's a normal snoot, but what in the heck is an optical snoot? Well, optical simply means you've added some optics to the snoot. In our case, that means a lens. Now, optical snoots are used in Hollywood with Fresnel lenses to focus the light. As you can imagine, those are really, really expensive. Now, there are some more affordable options for constant lights, but there actually aren't too many out there for flash. But there is a cool one made by a company called Spiffy Gear. They have some really unique light modifiers, and this one here is called the Light Blaster. It's 99 bucks, which is pretty nice considering what you can do with it. Now, how it works is you take your speed light and you put it in one side of this thing and tighten down this strap. Make sure you don't forget to tighten the strap so it doesn't fall out of there. Then on the other end, you attach a lens. That goes in on the other end at the same time. Now, this one in particular takes the Canon EF mount lenses, but they also make an adapter for Nikon. Now, what does having a lens on there allow you to actually do? Well, by changing the focal length, you can zoom in or out the light, making the beam wider or narrower. Here's the difference between using a 24 millimeter lens, a 50 millimeter lens, or 200 millimeters. The flash is about 10 feet from the wall, so here it is again from the side, so you can get a better idea of the distance. 24 millimeters, 50 millimeters, and 200 millimeters. Now you can of course use prime lenses on here, which are lightweight and are gonna allow more light to come through since they have generally have wider apertures. Of course, you can also use a zoom lens, which makes it easy to change the focal length without having to switch lenses. But having something like this really gives you some more cool options. The light blaster has a slot in it. Right here, there's a slot, so you can insert the included slide holder. It comes with a slide holder. They also sell some pre-made packs of slides like this. I've got a few of them here. Um, and this comes with a bunch of transparencies, a bunch of slides in here um, that what they do is you can, uh, you can use this in there. I'll show you how in a second, but you can also, if you don't want to use one of theirs, if you don't buy theirs, you can also use any slide that you might actually have. Now you can use this in really two main ways. The first is for backgrounds. This thing is basically a slide projector for your flash. If you're stuck with just a plain solid background, you can now project any image you want onto that wall behind your subject. Now I did a shoot earlier today with Tannis. I used one of the slides from Spiffy Gear's pack of wings. Um, it's a little tricky when you use this thing to line it up properly since you don't have a constant modeling light on a speed light. But what I would do is just shoot a frame, check the back of my camera, and then adjust the light blaster until it was in exactly the right spot. I then added the Lastalite Easy Box hot shoe to light her from the side. That's a small little soft box. And I was being very careful with it to aim it so I didn't hit the background and wash out those wings. Now, by the way, if you're wondering about my gear, I'm shooting with the Canon R5 mirrorless body with the 24 to 105 f4 lens, and I'm triggering 600 EXRT speed lights wirelessly with the STE3RT remote transmitter. Phew. But 
The truth is with this light blaster, you can really use just about any speed light size flash. And for the wings picture, I actually put the Canon 8 to 15 millimeter F4 lens on the light blaster, zoom to 15 millimeters. It was pretty close to the wall, so I really wanted to use that wide angle to make the wings spread out as much as I could. They even make an adapter to use big studio strobes if you want to have a modeling light to line up your shot even better. It attaches onto the strobe's reflector, and then they give you a black cover to put over the whole thing so you don't have any light leaks. Unfortunately, the reflector on my Orlit Rove light was too small to work with it, so make sure you check the size of your reflector before you buy. And actually, I really kind of love the simplicity of just using this with a speed light because it all fits together really elegantly. So then what I wanted to do was go from an angelic look with Tannis to a bit more of a devilish one. So I taped a small red gel over my flash and changed the entire mood of the image. Tannis, angelic, devilish, eh, could go either way. Thanks, Tannis, so much for uh, posing for me today. I appreciate it. Um, but now, like I said, you can actually put any slide you want in there. So the ones that you can buy are kind of interesting, but they also offer a pack of metal gobos with shapes that'll fit in there. But you can also use any slide that you might already have, or you can make one from your digital files. You can send those away and have those made as well. You can even print your own on transparency paper, just like you would for an overhead projector. That basically means that you can have any background in the world and you can do it all in camera without having to spend forever in Photoshop trying to mask out your subject. Now remember that you can change the focus on the lens. So a background like this cityscape, for example, can be used in the back either really sharp if you want, or you can dial the focus ring on the light blaster's lens, whatever lens you have on there. So it's more like just abstract colors. Now I said earlier you could use this thing in two main ways. Well, projecting onto the background, of course, is one, but you can also project light directly onto your subject. Since you can control the light with the lens, transparencies, and gobos, you can create an infinite number of light modifiers. So what I did was remove the red gel from the flash, and then I took a couple of small pieces of cinefoil and placed them inside the slide holder so there was just a thin rectangular opening. Now, of course, you can buy or make a slide like this, but cinefoil is thin enough to fit in there. So all I did was line it up, and then I was able to project a small sliver of light just onto Tannis' face. Now there was quite a bit of ambient daylight in the room, so I used that ambient to fill in the shadow side of her face and also the wall in the background. But then what I did was I changed my exposure to get rid of most of that ambient light, and you can see how different that looks. The shadow side of Tannis' face is much darker, and so is the background. Lastly, I wanted to add some color to the image, so I put that red gel on a second speed light and aimed it at the wall behind her using just a small light stand I put on the floor. The light blaster is really focusing that light, so it's just hitting that part of her face and doesn't bleed onto the wall and wash out any of that red color. Now this was just a quick shoot to give you an idea of what you can do with an optical snoot. Of course it can be used for more than portraits. Still life and food shooters, for example, could find it invaluable because you can really focus the light into a tiny area and get it right where you want it. I'm sure you figured out by now that there are virtually unlimited options and you're only limited by your creativity. Isn't that always the case? Um, have you ever used an optical snoot? How did it work out for you? Let me know down in the comments below. Remember also to send in your photo questions to askdavidbergman.com. While you're there, you could sign up for a one-on-one -on -one Zoom directly with me right here in my studio. I've dealt with most photography issues throughout my career and can help you with all kinds of technical, creative, or business problems. Click the one-on-one -on -one link at askdavidbergman.com for pricing and availability. Of course, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of the free photo shows that come out all week long from myself and all the other photo hosts right here on Adorama TV. I'm back here every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern, so I hope to see you next week with a new photo question on Ask David Bergman.